Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all fantastic. Today, we're taking a look at the Lexicon PCM81. New Year's Eve 2020. I was like, you know what? It's been 2020, hasn't it? <laughs> what a dog of a year. I'm going to treat myself and order a Lexicon PCM70 on Reverb, and I paid for it, and it was going to come from France, and then the seller messaged me the next day and said, look, we're really sorry. We were about to box this unit up and ship it out to you, and we checked it, and it's not working 100%, so here's a refund. And I was like, well, this year's got off to a great start. Anyway, long story short, I found this PCM81 here in Australia because I've never played a Lexicon before, and I've read and heard so much about them. All the clips I've heard, they sound incredible. They've obviously been used on so many classic albums. And after doing a bit of reading and taking some advice on the internet, I decided to get a PCM81 because I really wanted that PCM70 for, you know, the Steve Lukather circular delays thing. And the PCM81 can be programmed to do that. It does a whole lot more. There's more user memories. There's a dedicated chip in there for reverb and there's way more effects. So let's just dive headfirst into this wonderful beast. Let's get started with some sounds. I just want to show off a couple of my favorite sounds in the unit that more or less come stock. There are a few that I've kind of tweaked the levels on and there are a few little presets that I've downloaded. Shout out to Ryan aka Analog Kid 85 on the internet because I downloaded his circular delays preset for the 81. Sounds pretty fantastic. So we're going to hear that in a second. And that was one reason I wanted the PCM70 was the circular delays preset. And well, you can do it in the 81 as well, which is pretty fantastic. Before we get going though, I've got my Les Paul Custom, two TV Jones humbucker size P90s, and I'm using my Axe FX3 for all the amp tones, and I'm using it as a mixer. So the PCM81 is connected in a parallel effects loop. The PCM81 is set to 100% wet, and I actually have a volume pedal set up so that I can control the clean blend. So when I'm all the way down here, I have a... <laughs> And as I push forward on the pedal, I can blend in more of these wonderful algorithms. So let's start with the concert hall algorithm. And this is, you know, maybe good enough reason to buy this unit just for this one sound. Like I said, you know, that's kind of worth the price of entry alone. That sounds pretty amazing. And I wouldn't say, you know, that no one's kind of been able to create reverb algorithms, which sound that good these days, because there's a whole bunch of companies putting out reverbs, whether they're in plugin format, pedal format, in modelers like the Axe Effects, which I'm actually using at the moment, and we'll hear some comparisons in a second, uh, that can get there, but, you know, Lexicon, kind of got there first. When you think of Lexicon, you think of reverb. When I think of Lexicon reverbs, I think of a big hall reverb sound just like that. And like I said, that's just a factory preset. If you like reverb and you don't like that, I don't think you really like reverb. Let's check out this circular delays patch. It is using this multiband plus reverb. All of the built-in algorithms let you run effects plus reverb. The reverb has a dedicated processor, which is kind of cool. So you're never compromising if you want to run something with reverb. This is the 
circular delays. It says circular plus pan delays, but it's only doing the kind of famous or infamous circular delays section at the moment. Let's go back to the clean sound and I will blend it in a little bit. to excuse this rather inelegant punch in, but in this particular preset, if you hit edit and you navigate across to the input levels, by default in this preset, the right input levels are disabled, but you have to hit the load button to do that. So what I've done is I've turned that up and this is going to give you the PCM70 pan delays. So now this is going to be circular delays plus pan delays, but this is even more glorious. That's an absolute delight, as is the chorus and reverb algorithm, which lets you run, as you would expect, chorus and reverb, but you can also get delay on there if you like as well. This is a factory preset that I tweaked, and it's a pretty gorgeous, lush chorus. <laughs> There's also a little bit of extra modulation coming from the built-in LFO, which is pretty cool. I guess technically that's a flanger because there is a little bit of feedback on some of the delay lines. Let's move over to another preset. I've just called this one Vanilla Delays because I've set it up for a stereo quarter note and dotted eighth note delay. This particular patch isn't tied to tempo. I've also made a version which is tied to tempo and I'll show you how you can get what you want out of a tap tempo delay uh, by playing around with the master delay. But this does, you know, the kind of stock standard dual delay thing that I really love. <laughs> Love it, let's go over to the patch I was talking about before, which is the stereo tap delay. So this one's actually tied to the tap tempo. You can hit the control button on the front of the unit and kind of page up and down through a bunch of different things. Actually, it's not control, it's tempo, I'm an idiot. So you can set the beat value for the onboard tap tempo. I've set it to be an eighth note. And then if I actually go into the delay algorithm and we kind of find, uh, here we go, these are the controls that I want. I'm still getting used to the way this is laid out. I set up delay one to be three beats. So technically at the moment it is three eighth notes. And then the next delay is four eighth notes. The important thing though, is that these delays are in a three to four ratio. Uh, let's go down here because I can go to the delay times here. You can see there's a row 
delay master and then each of the individual delay voices. And I just set the delay master to 25%. So rather than it be three beats and four beats, now it's three quarters of a beat and one beat, which is what I want when I'm doing this dotted eighth note, quarter note thing. Have a listen. <laughs> And like I said, it is tied to the tap tempo. So uh, you can do that, you know, super obvious dotted eighth note, quarter note thing. You just kind of have to know how to program it. That took me maybe 10 minutes of kind of like thinking about the parameters in there. I was like, oh, of course, there's a master delay time. So that's how you get that out of the PCM81 if that's what you want. Let's take a look at some more presets. There's a quad detune. This uses the quad Hall algorithm. Of course, this means I can have Hall reverb on top of all of this. Let's go back to a clean sound and the neck pickup for this one. I'll load it up. Uh, I forget what the detune amounts were here. Let's have a look. I can kind of go through. So there's five ish seconds of reverb that I can bring in if I want. Uh, the levels, the delay times for the voices, and the pitches. So we've got 11 cents, minus 11 cents, 8 cents. Oh, minus eight cents and eight cents in there, I guess. It sounds like this. So I do have some reverb on there as well. You probably notice as well, there was a little bit of delay on there as well. What's really interesting in this so-called pro mode is if you go to the reverb designer, you have a whole bunch of parameters in here, which are really interesting, like the reverb size, the amount of diffusion, which also affects the delays. But if you come through, where is it? Uh, it's not on the reverb designer at all. Here we go, the reverb time, you have the ability to set basically all the advanced reverb parameters you like, but you can come in here and if you press the load button, you've got these reflections where you can set the reflection delays. So that's kind of cool. You actually have a few extra delays hiding in the reverb section of the algorithm. Before we explore some of the other sounds in this unit, because there are several really interesting sounding algorithms, I just kind of touched on, I guess, the vanilla stuff that would apply to most guitar players. I just want to show you that even though these units sit in this like god tier of, you know, the best reverbs ever, the inimitable circular delays and pan delays. Uh, you can get, you know, within spitting distance of them with modern units, and I'm gonna use the Axe FX3. You could do exactly the same thing in something like the FM3. I would say you could probably even get really close with an Axe FX2 or an AX8. Uh, but we'll just start with this concert hall setting, and I've just dialed up the stock Axe FX3 concert hall reverb, and we can hear them side by side. So here's the Lex. And the Axe. Neither of those sound particularly terrible, do they? They each have their own character going on, and I can totally understand why people are in love with the lexicon reverb sound. It has its own character going on. It just works. But, you know, I see a lot of stuff on the internet and, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Whereas people are like, no, nothing will ever sound as good as these lexicons. Your new pedal can't do this or your digital modeler can't do this. Whereas I think the reality is, is, you know, these lexicon reverbs are classics and I'm glad they're classics because they have inspired people to go back and revisit those designs and incorporate them into new designs. Uh, on that note, let's do the circular delays thing because I can do a very similar thing with the axe as well. So we'll start with the lexicon. Uh, maybe let's do this with a dirty sound just cause that's how you would be using this. And then we'll hear the axe. <laughs> Thank you. 
Pretty close, right? Again, this is, I guess, a matter of probably different algorithm designs and things like the slope of low pass filters and things like that coming in. But both of those sound fantastic in there. So, yeah, it's kind of nice that, you know, you can get these sounds with modern units. Again, I'm pretty grateful that Lexicon came up with all these amazing algorithms so that we can go and get things like the Axe FX and you know, if you know what you're doing, you can dial in sounds that either replicate it really closely or you can take these lexicon sounds as a jumping off point and you can kind of take them in a new direction. That's the whole point of all this new tech. Anyway, we're not really here to go on a rant about, you know, elitism about digital effects. Let's keep having some fun playing some guitar and I want to show off some more of my favorite algorithms in the lexicon because, oh, it sounds so good. Let's check out the reverb bank. I just want to go through a few stock reverb sounds. These are factory presets. And you know what? I imagine most people who use these either in guitar rigs or in studios probably don't do a whole lot of onboard programming. They just stick to the factory presets. So you can go chamber, small room, and you get... I apologize about the G string on this guitar. It is a big G after all. Let's hear another chamber algorithm. That's quite a nice subtle reverb. I imagine that would be really nice on something like an acoustic guitar or a vocal sound as well. While we're here, we've got a bunch of, oh, this is another classic one, the tiled room effect. I have read all about this one. I've actually not tried this one out just yet. I'll try it with the mix all the way up and then I'll kind of blend it to taste. <laughs> really nice. I bet you this is going to thicken up a dirty sound as well. I'll blend it in from zero this time. see why that's a classic preset in there. Uh, we've got this rich chamber. Let's hear this on a dirty sound and then a clean sound. <laughs> It's only about the fifth time I've had to stop during this video to tune this guitar. I consider that a win. It does sound really good, so I'll keep going with it. Uh, let's hear the plate algorithm. This is the Vox plate preset. <laughs>
again, just absolutely gorgeous and musical reverb spewing out of this thing. Uh, let's try, well, that's the plate. There's a whole bunch of other plates. I want to try, we've heard the concert hall in there as well, but I really want to get to a particular preset. So I'll stop kind of talking and just get to it. There's this really cool glide hall algorithm on here. And this particular preset is called Dyna Vibrato. So it's kind of like a ducking vibrato with a reverb. It's pretty, pretty sweet. You get a kind of swell into a vibrato sound on the reverb trails. Beautiful. <laughs> which is kind of like a reverse reverb cross with a mega tap delay. I quite like this ghost flange preset. interesting one in there as well. You can also get some non-linear reverbs out of this as well with one of the banks. I'll have to find that one. That actually works really nicely as a thickening agent on rhythm guitars because all the long tails are chopped off, but you still get that kind of like early reflections thing blending with your main guitar sound. It's a really, really sweet tone in there. I could keep going on with this unit and I did want to do a little bit of uh, a demonstration of programming it as well, but I think that's kind of far beyond the scope of what anybody is going to want to sit through. And if you've sat through this much of it, uh, thank you so much. I'm going to go back to that register bank and I'm going to go to this circular delays preset and I'm going to play you all out in a second because I just love the way this sounds. I also love all the reverbs in here. And the other thing that I like is there's so many cool sounding algorithms in here that I think once I read the manual properly and kind of get my head around how all the routing works in different algorithms, It'll actually be a creative tool and I'll be able to get deep into this and program some sounds. And again, like I was saying earlier, the lexicon designs and the sounds and the overall character is going to lead you in certain directions. And one thing I love about these old units and especially diving deep into them is they might lead you in that particular direction that you wouldn't necessarily go with another unit, like say my Axe FX. But then I can go back to my Axe FX and I can get inspired by a new approach. So it kind of works both ways. They sound great, but they also work with all the other great gear I've got as well. And they're as much a just kind of a tool for inspiration as they are for just, you know, tonal gluttony. So let me know what you thought of the PCM81. If you're a PCM81 owner and user and you've got any particular tips or tricks you want to share, let me know in the comments. I would love a help with this thing because it is still kind of in that era where everything's on unit, but there's not a whole bunch of help available on the unit itself. And yeah, just let me know what your favorite things to do with this particular thing. Uh, I got this because I was curious and this is a thousand percent a keeper. I love the way it sounds. It's pretty inspiring. And like I said, I'll play you out with that kind of circular delays patch. Thanks so much for watching. Stay excellent. <laughs>